Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Phil. Come on in. Oh, hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. What are you doing? Well, you know, our old friend, the oscilloscope. Oh, yeah, we've used them lots of times. And you remember how we usually have uh, wavy lines on it? Well, this time, instead, I have uh, fireworks. Yeah, this looks like a little bullet shooting across. Well, here's the tracers, look. Yeah. Well, um, what are we investigating today? Well, maybe I'm not going to tell you quite. But maybe I'll give you a clue. Uh, you see this, uh, these, these pieces of fruit down here? Would you take that knife and cut that apple? Cut the pear is already cut. cut you just cut the half? apple, yeah. Just cut it in half. Okay. Does that give you a clue as to what we're going to talk about today? I don't think we're going to talk about apples anyway. No, we're going to talk about, however, something that is that is illustrated by this apple and pear, and also by this uh, dancing dot up here. The two of them? Yeah, I don't. The two of them. I just don't see well, them. I agree that that's not much of a clue, and that I'm being very obtuse. But perhaps we'd better start at the very beginning. Uh, over there on the uh, the desk is a ruler. Here. Now, if I ask you what this was, what would you say? It's a ruler. Then I want to be more, get more information. Let's say what kind of ruler? Oh, it's a foot ruler. Now, notice what you did. It, this is a thing that has really three dimensions, doesn't it? It has length, which you just mentioned. Foot. It's a foot. Okay. But you didn't mention this dimension here. Oh, well, you mean the width of it? Yes, it's an inch and a quarter or something like that, right? Nor did you mention this. Oh, you mean this little the thickness yeah. of it, the height. Right. So in spite of the fact that this is a three-dimensional object, when I asked you what it was to describe it, what did you tell me? It's a foot ruler. One, one dimension. dimension. Now, this is what, for our purposes today, we'll call a one-dimensional object. In spite of the fact that it has three, you refer to it as by its one dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, can you think of anything in your everyday life other than a ruler that you ordinarily think of in one dimension? One dimension? In spite of the fact that it may have two mm. other rulers. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, longer yeah, rulers, yeah. a yardstick, yeah. something like that. Mm. Well, I don't know. Well, the length of anything. In other words, what I'm saying well, is... Well, I mean, the length of anything that isn't that much... That well, you how, about th how about this? Oh, a string, sewing thread. Yeah. In other words, once you've bought it, at the time you buy it, you're concerned about it's several of its dimensions. It's with, you know, and strength and so forth like that. But once you've got it, when you pull off a section of it, you really don't care how wide it is, do you? Only how long it is. Only how long it is. And that's, they, in fact, they don't even tell you anything about it other than, the, you know, that it's extra strong and only that it has all kinds of uh, numbers and so forth. But the mo most important thing here is 100 yards. That's, uh, so it's a one-dimensional object for our purpose. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, you're never really that concerned with mm -hmm. like, how thick something is. And by the way, so notice this one dimension can be in any direction. You go up, you go this way, you go that way. Oh, you mean like way. if I'm measuring a foot, I can measure it in any direction? In any plane, yeah. Okay. So now, that's a one dimension thing. What kind of uh, notebook paper do you have in your notebook at school? Eight and a half by 11. Oh. You uh, know what you did? Yeah, well, I told you two dimensions then in this thing. Mm -hmm. When I asked you about the ruler, you only mentioned one. But when I asked you about the paper, you mentioned two dimensions automatically, didn't you, to describe it? Because, you see, in the first case, what you were doing is you were really mentioning, you were uh, measuring the dimension of a line. Now, when I ask you about the paper, you were giving me the dimensions of a plane. Look, eight and a half, one dimension, by 11, two dimensions. Are we going to talk about two dimensions? Well, no, we're not going to talk about two dimensions. <laughs> But you're getting close. Uh, notice now, to describe this plane, you use the two dimensions. But um, describe that spot. Where is that spot? In the same way that I could, in one dimension, say number six is right here. Can you tell me where oh. that spot is? Well, what you have to do, I guess, is measure part of this plane, the eight and a half plane. Yeah, you measure this dimension, really, not plane. Mm -hmm. Oh, I missed it. I was going to mark it at two and a half, but I'm a little off. So let's call that two and a half, and then what? Well, let's see, then you'd have to measure 
part of this dimension. Okay, what you really are doing, you see, is saying that there is a line going along on this piece of paper like this, and there is a line going along on this paper like this. And if you take the two and a half inch mark here and the four inch mark here, you'll find where those two cross, that's where that dot is. So to find a point on a plane, you need two dimensions. Okay? Now, over there on that map, See up there on the wall? Mm -hmm. Would you uh, check uh, C uh, 18 and a half? Well, let's see. 18, 18 and a half. Yeah, and C. C. All right. Mm. See where it is? Right near Lincoln Center. Should have said 18 and you had it. A little high. See, it's halfway between 18. 18 C? 18 C would have been right in the middle of Lincoln Center. Notice now, in order to find a point on the plane surface, a map, I gave you two dimensions, and you were able to find the specific point, which I have oh, in mind. Oh, I see. That's like, as you said, on the paper. If this yes. was the whole paper, the whole map, these would be the All two right. points. So whenever you look at something on a map, where you come down from one side on the other, you can find the position. Mm -hmm. Same thing as though you had streets and avenues. All the streets go one way, and all the avenues someplace where they meet that, you know, where you can find your address. Now let's look at that oscilloscope. Because we are now going to look at the way scientists use it to find two dimensions. In order to do that, notice that I could stop everything and make just a little dot of light right there. Yeah. Now, you see this control? You move that up and down. Oh, it makes, it makes the little dot go up and down. Yes. I have, now, put it back in the center again. I have a little dot, of, I have a control, and I can make it go this way over here. Oh, so you could set, you could set, like, a point somewhere. Now notice when we found this, the dot in the middle of the piece of paper, how we used the ruler and measured off so many inches from so and so many inches in there. Notice that we have to, we could find that same, do the same thing here. In fact, let's go, um, we need the ruler though. We don't have any ruler so far. Mm -hmm. Unless you can see, you see in the background there, there's some little lines? Yeah, that's Just barely. Effect. Will you turn this knob now? Mm -hmm. Oh. Now the lines light up. So what we have is a series of rulers. Well, that looks like a graph. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's a graph. <laughs> That's what, exactly what a graph is. It's a device for finding a point on a plane. Here's our point. And notice that in this case, the ruler runs along the middle. And there's another ruler here. Whoops, I turned it on now. This one. See? Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll, let's find the Lincoln Center over there. It was about mm -hmm. like that. And now you have to do something with yours. Mm -hmm. Go up about that would be Lincoln Center, right? 18. Okay. So a scientist now said, if we put various electrical uh, currents into this machine and we find that we de deflect our spot from that point up to here, we can now describe that deflection in terms of these two rulers. These two rulers. Well, yeah. in other words, but you need like you need something. You need the scale. The or scale the ruler to do it. To be able right. to show it. Now that's one dot. But ordinarily, when we use an oscilloscope, we don't have a dot, do we? We have well, a whole have series of lines. lines. Well, let me see if I can fix that up. So that we have a series of wavy lines. I think I was out of position to start. Let's get it here. Like that. Like that, no. Ah. There it comes. That's more like it. Oh, now what? Now we have to turn the intensity up a little bit. That's the sort of thing which you ordinarily saw, right? Yeah, sure. You see the, the so that a, a scientist in measure in measuring these things. Uh, let's see if I can get them stop about like that. In measuring these, he could measure the distance between the two points in terms of the scale. He could measure the height in terms of the scale. And he can now describe those waves in terms of the graph that he's just plotted. Oh, you mean like he could say that uh, the top of this is up to this line, right. down to this line, they're this far apart, and he could describe what the wave is like. Right. He could certainly describe it. Okay, so you see now how we're dealing in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. Now, how about um, the globe over there? See that globe back here? What kind of an object is that? Uh, it's a sphere. So it's how many dimensions? Three. That's right. It's three dimensions. Because I know all spheres have... However, when you look at a globe like this, and, and, uh, as far as finding a, uh, a point on it, you don't think about it in three dimensions. The same way when I said a ruler, you think of its length. And when you, I say a piece of paper, you didn't think of its thickness or anything like that. What you, now when I look at this, you immediately think of its three dimensions. But when we look at it, what do we look at mostly? Its surface. Well, 
Oh, we're trying to find things. We look at things right. on the surface. So the all, object. so that we will disregard the fact that this is a three-dimensional object and instead think of it as a two-dimensional object. Does that seem possible? Mm, well, I, I guess it, it must be something like the ruler a little bit. Well, whereas it was three-dimensional, but we only we're only going to think of the two-dimensional. Two in fact, on the surface of this globe is a two-dimensional grid line like we had over in the oscilloscope. You know what it's called? Oh, the latitude and longitude. Yes, but you remember on the oscilloscope there was a point where the two crossed, and that would be considered zero. Is there a zero latitude and a zero longitude? I guess there should be one. There must be one, but... You know where it is? I know, I don't. Well, well, well let's see if we, they meet. Let's see if we can find it. Where is zero latitude? The equator. Okay, find the equator. Is here. Yes, there's a line right along in there. Mm. Okay, now where is zero uh, longitude? That goes to a city in England, Greenwich. Right. Okay. Here it is, right here. See it? Mm -hmm. Greenwich, England. Now, if we find this zero and, and run it down to find the other zero, see if you can find it. What? Follow it down. Still going. Still going. There it is. There's a zero. It's zero, zero. Right. Latitude longitude. If you were in a boat right there at that point, your position on the surface of the Earth would be zero latitude and zero longitude. <laughs> and really, we measure everything from there, don't we? In the same way that the scientists well, use the graph. Out, yes. Okay. So now we've found uh, two-dimensional objects. The fact that everything, is, the fact these things are three-dimensional, we've only mentioned the two. Now, how about um, three-dimensional objects? Do you think of that where we talk about all three at once? In fact, up there is a piece of wood. See it? If you were going to describe that, how would you describe it? Would you say, would you say uh, 11, 8 and a half by 11, or 2 by 4, or whatever it is? No. I'd say, oh, I have to give three dimensions. Right. I'd have to say this length, yeah. the width. Yeah. Well, you said length. If that's the case, you better yeah. do it that way, so you get height going up this way. Length, right. the height. And the width of it. Okay. Well, is that is that what we're talking about now? Yeah. Three what? Dimensions. Well. Dimensions. We're talking about <laughs> dimensions, but not three dimensions. Although perhaps you think that you can describe anything with three dimensions, you'll see that it is not true. You can describe this piece of wood, however, mm -hmm. in three dimensions. Now, have you ever bought lumber? Well, I haven't, but uh, my parents just built a new house, and yeah. we had to order lumber for it. How did they order it? You know? Well, mostly two by four, which is a board, a yeah. standard board, and uh, then a length of it. Right. Three Six, dimensions. Six, whatever it was. Yeah. Well, so if, uh, if you say uh, it's a foot ruler and an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper to describe a piece of lumber, you say two by four by six. One, two, and three two dimensions. Two and three dimensions, yeah. How about uh, a refrigerator? Do you buy that in three dimensions? Do you talk about it in three dimensions? Oh, well, I think you talk about what's inside in three dimensions. Like what? Well, the, the area, the cubic. No, the how many cubic feet? Right. In other words, it's a 12 cubic, cubic, cubic foot, 10 cubic foot. Right. So, so that in, in buying a refrigerator, you are concerned about its three dimensions. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about this? What is it? It's a quart of milk. So you told me about three dimensions immediately. Well, I mean, I know the bottle is three dimensions, but yeah. uh, I don't see how milk. Well, well you see, whenever you talk about whenever you talk about volume, whether it's bushels, uh, um, cubic feet, or anything, you're really talking about all three dimensions. You're saying that if you have a container this high, this wide, and that deep, it will hold so much. So therefore, oh, so therefore, the quart of milk will be. Right. It, it's three a three-dimensional thing. Okay. Well, now we've, we've covered all the dimensions, and theoretically, at least for a long time, people thought that you could describe anything Seems so. in three dimensions. By the way, notice in this case that we've talked about only the same thing as the piece of paper, but we haven't found the point in space. For example, here's this globe. We now have two dimensions on the face of the globe, but let's, let's think about how they describe where an astronaut is. He's in a three-dimensional system. He's out someplace. He's out someplace. In fact, uh, let's take Cape Canaveral there now. How do they describe where the astronaut is? Well, one of his trips, they said, uh, I don't know, he's about 125 miles above the coast of Florida. Okay, so this means that they say that because we all know where the coast of Florida is, at least on our maps. But if you were going to be very technical about it, you'd say that he was in such and such a latitude, such and such a longitude, and so many miles up. Mm -hmm. 
So there you have the three dimensions. Oh, I see. Well, length, width, and right. his height. Where by, the, he by the way, it's a very interesting um, thing here. Notice right down here the legend on the thing. Notice that line right there. See what it says? One inch equals 500 miles. One inch equals 500 miles. That means if you have one inch on the map here, 500, 500 miles. miles. How high did the astronauts go? Between 100 and 150 miles. Okay. Using a globe like this as an example of the size of the Earth, how far off the surface of, the, of this globe would you have to put a point to indicate where the astronaut was? About a quarter of an inch. Is <laughs> that all? Just Isn't a, that amazing? Just a little bit? Yeah, a quarter I, of an inch. I thought that, I don't know, you see pictures in newspapers, though, and they're way far away. It's well, they show a little Earth, you know. That's because they mixed up their dimensions. They didn't keep the dimensions the same. They made the astronauts' sp spaceship in one dimension and this and the Somehow other. Somehow you don't realize this such a little bit in proportion to the size right. of the Earth. Okay, now... There is another dimension, however, that we haven't talked about yet, that is extremely important every day in your life, and that you talk about it and include it as part of your descriptions of things in space, and yet we haven't talked about it at all yet. Have you ever heard of a fourth dimension? Yeah, I think I've heard of the fourth dimension. Uh, well, that's mm -hmm. what we're really going to investigate today, the fourth dimension. So far, we've seen three. What are they? Well, the length. The length. The width. The width. And the height and or the altitude. Height. And therefore, to describe a point in space, we think that those three dimensions are enough. We just throw this uh, astronaut it out in space. So, yeah. However, the fourth dimension is necessary, and the fourth dimension is time. You mean like uh, time? Time. Well, yeah. I, I know time is important. Like if you have an appointment and you want to get there on time. Well, now let's what, let's you you remember. Have to judge accordingly. That's true, but. And that would that would be an important part of time. But let's think of it now. Remember we looked at a one-dimensional thing and a two-dimensional thing and a three-dimensional thing? Let us just take one dimension and add the other dimension of time. Let me pose this problem for you. Um, a road is a one-dimensional object, isn't it? It has length only as far as our purposes are concerned. Yet if a car were starting from Chicago and going to New York, and we're traveling 60 miles an hour, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Well, I can't tell you just from knowing the length. No. Why not? Oh. Oh, now I see where time comes into it, Why? though. Well, I think if you told me somewhere along that road that at a certain time he was there... Then you'd know where he was. Then i know yeah. where he was. In other words, as long as the man is moving, you have to include time as part of the description of where he is because you would have to say, at 12 o'clock noon... He was in uh, Gary, Indiana, and then you'd know where he was. But he's not there now because it's not 12 o'clock. So therefore, that's one dimension in space and one dimension in time. And it's very important that you include that. Yeah, right? I didn't think of it that way. Okay, now let's look at two dimensions in space and one dimension in time. Oh. Over there is a phonograph. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Have you, have you, you know Peter and Wolf? Yeah. Have you ever heard it narrated by Donald Duck? Yeah. <laughs> no. I have a new recording. Something new. That's on the wrong speed. Peter and the Wolf. No, it's just, but it isn't. It's Donald Duck. It's just that you have the normal voice going too fast. Oh, in other words, in in describing this, you need time. Oh yeah. I said it without even realizing. Yes, without well, reading. You said 33 and a third what? Revolutions per minute. Okay. Now, the reason I did this uh, is I wanted you to realize that in order to describe a spot on a plane surface, remember with the piece of paper over there, we said you have to use one dimension and then the other dimension, and you could describe that spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, here. Here is sort of a paper record. See? And here are the grooves. You put the needle in like this. And then when you turn it on, the needle goes around and goes its way in here. See that? Mm -hmm. I want you to describe that spot right there. That spot? Mm -hmm. Well, you could measure where it was from. You could do it with a compass heading, for example. That gives yeah. you an angle from a certain point. Well, yeah. you could take an angle mm -hmm. and find this, and then find the angle that it forms right. with that. So you could do it. And then you would have... Uh, You'd be able to locate the You point. could measure this distance out here, and you could also measure this distance over here from a point right here, and do just, just like our paper. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but the only trouble with that is that this is the way the record's going. So that point isn't there where you measured it at all. Oh, we yeah, now yeah, have... Right. See, we now have a new kind of problem. We have a two-dimensional thing, but it's moving. Same thing as the car going along the road. Well, 
Well, so how are you going to describe where that spot is? I guess using time. Right. You could, uh, like if at a certain time you knew where it was, like now. <laughs> where's <laughs> yep, the thing went around, yeah. yeah. I see where it is, and if I said at this second it's right there. Right. Well, then I'd be able to calculate it, but once I let it go... Then... Yeah, then, it's, it's off then it's no longer any good, unless you know the speed with which it's going, and then you can calculate if it's there at such and such a time, you know it's going 33 and a third revolutions per minute. At the end of another minute, you know it's gone 33 and a third revolutions, and you could track it in, you could find where it exactly is. Oh. You get the idea, huh? Yeah, I see now. So that when you have a two-dimensional object that's moving, you must also include that idea of time. And ordinarily, when we're using that oscilloscope over there, that's what we're doing. We're including two dimensions and time. Come on, let's take a look at it. That's what I was doing when you came in. See, or, see how these things are moving? Let me, set it, yeah, let me set it up back like I had it before. And you will see how... Get it all centered, you know, like that. We can center it up like this. Now... Got it going the wrong way. Wait a minute. Well, we let's let it go this way. The point is that uh, scientists, all right, scientists, when they set up oscilloscopes, can set up the oscilloscope in such a way so that this dot moves. Right now, it's bouncing up and down in this direction. And we can vary the speed with which it moves. Look. <laughs> and, th there's the, there's, and th that was the uh, height, and here's the speed. There, you see what I mean? They're going so fast that it, that it almost looks like a straight line. Okay, now, in other words, we could, let's stop it again down here. I see what's going on here. I got this one. Let's stop it this way. Uh, we can vary the position of the dot, as you saw. If we vary the position of the dot so it starts here, we can now turn on this thing so it begins to sweep. See, so it begins to sweep across over here. As it sweeps, we can change the speed with which it sweeps. Watch. See that? Oh. Going faster and faster and faster. Go faster and faster in the same place, though. Now, all I have to do is put some kind of an electrical signal on here, and I can deflect it, move it up or down. So that I now know, if I know the speed with uh, which it's sweeping, let me turn it up so you can see the line. If I know the speed with which it's sweeping, I can now tell what the frequency of the thing is. Let me turn this thing, signal on again. Now I'll, I'll turn on so it goes faster and faster. Now you see how scientists could find the, the, by measuring this, they know how fast something is moving. So here they have this and this and time. You get the idea? Two dimensions and time. Two dimensions and time. Now, how about three dimensions and time? Three dimensions? Three dimensions in space and one in time. Come on over here and look at this map. Because here is an example of three dimensions in time. Wow, what a map. Well, this is a map of the Mississippi River uh, made by the Army engineers and, and uh, various civilians as they're studying the course of the river. It's about the biggest thing I've ever seen. Well, <laughs> I, map, I, I pasted right? a bunch of them together so we get an idea of the real sweep of how, how, the, how the river is flowing down. Now, here's the problem. As a surveyor, you might want to know where this spot is right here. Like on a, you know, on a front porch or something where you're going to build a house. In order to find this spot in space, how many dimensions do we need? The spot in space, yes. well, length, length, and longi width. longitude, latitude, and oh, in space. Yes, we need height we need too. Height so we need three dimensions. Okay, if it's true that you measured, let's say, the tree on the on the bank of the river, you could say it's so many feet above the water, and it's such and such a latitude and such and such a longitude, and you could then go on a map theoretically and find this. But look at right here. Is that the Mississippi River, too? That's the Mississippi River 3,000 years ago. And if you took this map and tried to find that a point, you wouldn't find any water. Because, you see, the Mississippi River is constantly changing, just like the car going along the road. Yeah, well, look at this. This is here, it's up there, and all of a sudden it's down here. Right. And, uh, so, you see, in order to really pinpoint a point in space, you must include time, because... The, the, your your uh, marks that you're beginning with are changing constantly. I mean, if I look for this now, it wouldn't even wouldn't be, there. be there. So well, every time you make a map or look at a map, you must check the date of the map to find out how accurate it is. Now, 
Here's another example. Would you stand here like this? Would you lean forward, lean forward, put your hands up about like that? Pretty good. Now, you just stand just like that. What's going on? Well, you'll see. Okay, now, puff your cheeks out a little bit. You ready? What is this, anyway? Well, you'll see. Okay, thank you. What's going on? Well, you see, not only is time important for things that are, that are in process like you, or like a river, but also for people like you. Watch. Would you please look at that? And I want you to compare that with this. Where did you get that from? Well, I asked your mother if she wouldn't give me a picture of you. How old were you when that picture was taken? I remember that. Well, I don't remember when it was taken. I was five and a half months old. Yeah, and look, see how you've changed? In yeah. spite of the fact that I had you puff your cheeks out and lean forward, you have changed considerably. So in describing you, what do I have to include? You should put in my age, the, the time. The time, yes. You should have said that was how many years yes. ago, yeah. And uh, do you remember at the beginning when you came in, I said that, that there was a similarity between that uh, apple that you cut and that fruit that was on the plate and uh, the, uh, the scope over there? Let's take a look at that. Now, both of these were nice, fresh fruit at one time, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yet, look at the pear. Boy. What's Whoa. the matter with it? It's rotten. It's... Yes, so here is a living thing that obviously when you buy it, what do you, how do you uh, designate it? Fresh. Yes, and what is that? Oh, fresh, new. Right, fresh, time. new. So you see, whenever something is moving, you have to include time, like in the truck and so forth. And whenever something is alive, you have to use time. Is, is that what these have in common, the time? That's and right. Sweep and and one more fruit. thing. What should I do with this fruit? That's all right, just leave it there. Okay. Because here is another example of the fact that in spite of the fact that you talked about these things, you did not include time. Would you like to buy a refrigerator that looks like this? No, it's an old model. Oh. Old. Time again. I'd like to buy a 1962. Yes. And the same thing with this milk. Smell it. Sour milk. I want to buy fresh milk. So not only do you talk about these things in all of their dimensions in space by saying length, breadth, and width, but most of the time, without even thinking it, you include that fourth dimension, which you and I now know is what? Time. Yes. And here's how the scientist looks at it. By varying the time, he can measure it. Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.